and welcome to our Community Bible Study for Thursday, November the 26th, 2020. Uh, today is Thanksgiving Day, and uh, perhaps it's appropriate that we read the story of Ruth from the book of Ruth because it is a story of faithfulness and gratitude and loyalty and a good one for all of us to remember. I hope that you're having a great day. This is likely to be a different Thanksgiving than we're used to, but I hope it's a good day anyway. So we begin with a prayer and a reading from the book of Ruth. Lord, watch over us today. Help us to be enjoy our blessings, to be thankful, and to know that you are with us always. Help us to learn from this scripture reading and apply it in our lives. Amen. The book of Ruth is a story of a young woman from a foreign country of Moab who um, was, uh, they were looked down upon by the Israelites and sometimes there was a conflict. And so this young woman from Moab marries an Israelite man. But after her husband dies, instead of returning back to her people, she remains loyal to her mother-in-law, Naomi. Poverty is avoided when her kindness attracts the attention of a wealthy landowner named Boaz. Uh, there's a twist to the story that we'll find out. The story is set during the time of the judges, which is obviously prior to the time of King David. And it's a contrast to what was often uh, a time of moral decay in the country. Because of Ruth's character and her kindness, she is rewarded with a wealthy husband and becomes the great-grandmother of King David. So chapter one is about Naomi losing her husband and her sons. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech, and his wife's name was Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and lived there. Um, Moab is, of course, now in uh, what is now Jordan, and uh, it's definitely an area that um, is, is an agricultural area, not quite as dry as much of Israel, at least Bethlehem. Verse 3, now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And she was left with the two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other Ruth. After they lived there about 10 years, both Malon and Kilian also died. And so Naomi was left without her two sons and without her husband. And in those days, that was a treacherous uh, time for a woman. So verse six, when Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people in Israel by providing food for them, she and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she'd been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go back each of you to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they wept aloud, and said to her, We will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, Return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could be your husband? Return home, my daughters, I'm too old to have another husband. And even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters, it is more bitter for me than for you because the Lord's hand has turned against me. So Naomi was really feeling despair, but she knew that uh, her daughters-in-law would be better trying to start anew back with their original families in Moab. 
At this, the women wept again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. But Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her to leave. Now, these are famous words that are quoted many times about wherever you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. But key here in the history of Israel and in the record of faith is your God will be my God. She has become like an Israelite in the worship of the Lord, and she did not want to return to uh, whatever they worshiped in Moab. Verse 19, so the two women, that's Naomi the mother and Ruth the daughter-in-law, went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the woman exclaimed, can this be Naomi? Now Bethlehem is, is a small town. And, um, and so uh, people knew one another. And uh, this was, you know, Naomi returning home after, what was it, at least 10, oh, probably more years than that. And um, yes, it would have been more years than that. But uh, she was a member of a family uh, from Bethlehem and had rights to some property. And uh, so anyway, Naomi returned and the whole town uh, heard about it. Verse 20, she told them, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara, because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. So Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by Ruth, the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, arriving in Bethlehem as the barley harvest was beginning. So the first chapter here is the chapter of tragedy and loss and of Naomi feeling like the Lord has made her life bitter. She went away doing well and has come back with less. But that's not the whole story. Chapter two, Ruth meets Boab. Now, Naomi had a relative on her husband's side, a man of standing from the clan of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone who, in whose eyes I find favor. You know, in the, uh, all of the extensions and details of the law that we find in the book of Leviticus talks about how you uh, are helpful to one another, how you're respectful, and how you meet the needs of strangers and those who have less. And one of the um, uh, one of the opportunities that people had was if you owned land, you were not to harvest all the way to the edges of the land, but leave a little bit border around near the end uh, so that people who were poor or strangers or who were travelers could at least come and they could glean those crops from your field. And that was a uh, part of the law that you were supposed to leave those for others. And so, you know, your, your workers or yourself could take, uh, you know, 95% of what was on the field, but you left a little around the edges and that was for others to, to get. Those who were in need had an opportunity to, to at least get some food or some barley or some basic needs. So um, Naomi said to Ruth, go ahead, my daughter. So Ruth went out, entered a field and began to glean behind the harvesters. As it turned out, she was working in a field belonging to Boaz, who was also from the clan of Elimelech, a relative of Naomi's. 
Just then Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you, they answered. Do you ever wonder why in some churches we have that, the Lord be with you and also with you, the Lord bless you. Um, we didn't just make those things up out of nowhere. Uh, they refer to here and other parts of scripture. Um, and this is obviously the greeting that was here. Boaz asked the overseer of the harvesters, who does that young woman belong to? This was someone new, Ruth. The overseer replied, she is the Moabite who came back from Moab with Naomi. She said, please let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. She came into the field and has remained here from morning until now, except for a short rest in the shelter. So Boaz calls her and says, Ruth, my daughter, listen, don't go and glean in another field and don't go away from here. Stay here with the women who work for me. Watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along after the women. I have told the men not to lay a hand on you. And whenever you are thirsty, go get a drink from the water jars the men have filled. So he's looking out for her. Um, is she an attractive young woman who gets his attention? I think probably. Um, is he um, uh, a kind man who is willing to be generous to others? Oh, certainly. And um, he also uh, knows that she came back with Naomi. And Naomi is a family, distant family member. And so he is, uh, he is being kind to them. And he's also encouraging her to stick to the women, be around them, there'll be some protection. And I've told the men not to bother you. Now you see women who were single um, and who had already been married or who had lost a husband, uh, you know, their economic opportunities were few. And uh, many times uh, they were taken advantage of by the men. And many times uh, that is how the women uh, made their, uh, were able to survive was by uh, allowing that to happen. So that Boaz is protecting Ruth here. Boaz tells her that he's heard all about what she's done for your mother-in-law. And he says, may the Lord repay you for what you have done. And she replies, may I continue to find favor in your eyes. And you know, those back and forth, of course, greetings and very proper, but I still can't help but see a little bit of attraction and flirting. Of course, we know the story, so you can kind of read that in there. Well, when it came mealtime, uh, Boaz said, come over here, have some bread and dip it in the wine vinegar. He didn't have to do that. When she sat down with the harvesters, he offered her some roasted grain. She ate all she wanted and had some left over, so he was very generous. As she got back up to go gleaning, Boaz gave orders. Let her gather among the sheaves and don't reprimand her. Even pull out some stalks for her from the bundles and leave them for her to pick up and don't rebuke her. So don't, don't, don't force her to just go around the edges, but leave some, some good stuff for her to pick up and, and let her do that. Boaz is clearly um, struck by Ruth. So Ruth gleaned in the field all the way till evening. She was there all day. She threshed the barley she had gathered and it amounted to about an FF. Now, um, what I read is that that's a considerable amount, perhaps as much as even 30 pounds worth of, uh, of barley. So they were generous in what they allowed her to have and she worked hard to um, be able to uh, harvest and then thresh, you know, to get rid of the bad parts that you don't need and then to get the barley that she can actually use. She carries it back into town and her mother-in-law saw how much she had gathered. Ruth also brought out and gave her what she had left over from the meal that Boaz had. Well, Naomi asked, where did you go? Where did you work? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. And Ruth told her about where she working. She's mentioned it was Boaz. Verse 20, the Lord bless him, Naomi says. He has not stopped showing his kindness to the living and the dead. She said that man is a close relative. He's one of our guardian redeemers. 
Now, what that means is that also in the Levitical law, uh, if a man dies, his wife is to be uh, taken care of. Perhaps if his brother uh, is not married, he can uh, take her as a, as a wife. Um, or other near relatives have a duty to redeem the family line by uh, continuing that with, uh, with a woman who was married into the family. And uh, they were like guardians to try to protect them, but they were also redeeming so that the family lineage would continue. So Boaz was close enough to, to be uh, eligible to, to, for that responsibility. So Ruth said, he even said to me, stay with my workers until they finish harvesting all the grain. And Naomi said, it's good for you to be um, with the women who work for him because someone else's field, you might be harmed. And so Ruth continued to stay close to the women who were in Boaz's field and to glean the barley and the wheat harvest until they were all finished. So she was doing, they were doing well enough um, because of the generosity of Boaz and uh, his protection of Ruth. Chapter three, this is where things get a little hot and steamy. One day, Ruth's mother-in-law, Naomi said, my daughter, I've got to find a home for you where you'll be well provided for. Now, Boaz, where you have been working as a relative, tonight he will be winnowing barley on the threshing floor. Go wash, put on perfume, get dressed in your best clothes and go down there. Don't let him know you were there until he's finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, notice where he's lying, then go and uncover his feet and lie down. He will tell you what to do. Ah, she's going to um, uh, make a little move here for Boaz. Ruth said, I'll do whatever you say. Now, that's an obedient statement. Um, uh, clearly, uh, she is um, cooperating. So she went and did everything that Naomi told her. Boaz finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits. He went over to lie down at the far end of the pile of grain. Ruth approached, approached quietly, uncovered his feet, and lay down next to him. In the middle of the night, something startled the man. He turned, and there was a woman lying at his feet. He didn't expect that. Who are you? She, he asked. I am your servant, Ruth, she said. Spread the corner of your garment over me, since you are a guardian redeemer of our family. Now, certainly um, there is perhaps an innocence to this, but there is certainly the interplay of um, her hoping that he will take care of her. The Lord bless you, he replied. The kindness is greater than that which showed earlier. You have not run after the younger men, whether rich or poor. And now, my daughter, don't be afraid. I will do for you all you ask. The people of my town know that you're a woman of noble character. So he is... Uh, flattered. Um, he is not the youngest man around. He knows that she could have gone after someone else. and um, But he is, um, uh, he's going along with uh, this approach. He also said, although it's true, I am a guardian redeemer of our family. There is another who is more closely related. Stay here for the night. And in the morning, if he wants to do his duty, then let him redeem you. But if he's not willing, as surely as the Lord lives, I will do it. Lie here till morning. So he lets her stay. He likes her company. We don't have any indication of, uh, of uh, anything inappropriate. Um, but, you know, human nature, I don't know what, you know, we just don't know about that. But he does say that there is a relative closer who would have the first right. Now, the first right is not just on Ruth being um, um, being a marriageable opportunity, but also on whatever property Naomi has that she, they're living on 
is inherited property. And for her to keep that, uh, there, there has to be a man who can hold property because women could not in those days. So, um, you know, whoever it is, uh, Boaz is letting this man, and he's never named, um, uh, let him uh, have the, uh, the legal right first. So she lay at his feet until morning, but got up before anyone could be recognized and said, no one must know that a woman came to the threshing floor. He also said, bring me the shawl you're wearing and hold it out. And when she did, he poured some more barley and gave her the bundle and she went back to town, gave her some more food. When Ruth came home, Naomi asked, how did it go? She told him everything and added, he gave me these six measures of barley saying, don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. Boaz is generous to both of these ladies. So Naomi said, wait, my daughter, until you find out what happens, for the man will not rest until the matter is settled today. Naomi knows that one way or the other, uh, either Boaz or the other relative uh, will make a claim on um, on uh, Ruth as a wife and on Naomi's property. And she's convinced that Boaz is hooked and he's not gonna let her get away. Chapter four, the last chapter of the book. Meanwhile, Boaz went to the town gate and sat down there as the other guardian redeemer, the other family member, he came along and Boaz said, come over here and sit down. So he took 10 elders of the town so there would be a witness to this transaction. And then he said to them, Naomi has come back. I thought I should bring the matter to your attention. And if you want to redeem um, uh, her and the situation and the property, then tell me. Uh, and if not, then I am next in line. He said, well, I will redeem it. Then Boaz said, on the day you buy the land from Naomi though, you also acquire Ruth, the Moabite, the dead man's widow, in order to maintain the name of the dead with his property. Now, at this point, the uh, the other man said, I cannot do that because it's going to endanger his own estate. Um, it was very important that one maintain one's property and lineage, and he didn't want to mix that up, his, that he already had, with this of um, uh, Naomi, Naomi and Ruth's um, family. And so he turns them down. Um, so he said, buy it yourself. And he removed his sandal, uh, which was part of, the, uh, part of the way, instead of shaking hands or signing a contract, that was, that was how you uh, said, this is final, this is official. And they had the 10 elders to witness. So Boaz announced to the elders and the people, you are witnesses that I have bought from Naomi all the property of Elimelech, Kilian and Malon. And I've also acquired Ruth, the Moabite, uh, as my wife in order to maintain the name of the dead with his property. So his name will not disappear from among his family or his hometown. Today you are witnesses. So the lineage of that part of the family will continue. Um, there's no mention of whether that would interfere with Moab's lineage, but he's struck with Ruth and I don't think it matters. So um, the elders and the people said, we are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your home like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the family of Israel. Oh, that's a nice blessing and wish. May you have standing in Ephrathath and be famous in Bethlehem. Through the offspring of the Lord, the Lord gives you this by this woman, through your offspring. Uh, may your family be like that of Perez, who Tamar bore to Judah. So um, they are blessing that he, things go well and his, el, his, um, his descendants and offspring um, are numerous and well. So, verse 13. Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. When he made love to her, the Lord enabled her to conceive, and she gave birth to a son. 
The women said to Naomi, praise be to the Lord, who this day has not left you without a guardian redeemer. May he become famous throughout Israel. Now that was a blessing made, but we're going to discover that that was more than just that. It was prophetic. He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you and who is better to you than seven sons has given him birth. So they recognize the blessings that Naomi has. So verse 16, then Naomi took the child, the little boy, and cared for him. The women living there said, Naomi has a son. It's a grandson, but a son. And they named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. So Obed continued the lineage. Because of Ruth staying with Naomi, and Boaz taking her as his wife, and her having a son, Obed. Then the lineage continues through Jesse, and then to David, who becomes the king. And so the lineage would have died out if it were not for them. And that is part of the story. You know, part of this is how God you know, Naomi at the beginning thought God was had let her down. God redeemed um, the situation. So part of it is faithfulness uh, by people is recognized and redeemed by God. Part is that even in the midst of tragedy and difficulty, one can count on that God will get you through and... Um, and, and sometimes even bless you in ways you never expect. It's also part of the story of God's faithfulness to the people of Israel and his covenant that goes uh, from generation to generation. It's also a story of love, of love of a daughter-in-law for her mother-in-law, and of a man named Boaz who uh, is care caring and uh, respectful and generous, and Ruth, who is the benefit of that. And God always honors these. There's uh, a lot of scholars that think the book of Ruth was, um, uh, was told and put into this form years later when uh, the people of Israel needed to be reminded that even a foreigner who was faithful would be appreciated by God, and that those values that are true in this story are, are important values. And um, I think that even today we can recognize that. God bless you. We'll see you next week.